Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video. We will take a closer look today at the Corsair A500 air cooling unit. We spotted this during CES 2020 when we visited Corsair in Las Vegas for exhibition tour. And uh, Corsair didn't really announce or really produce any air cooling units for about 10 years. That's why this is kind of a new thing. And I was a little bit critical when it comes to the A500, especially considering the price of about 100 euro here in Germany, considering that it's direct heat pipe touch and the size and everything. And Corsair said, sure, fine, you can just test it yourself. Here's a cooling unit. That's why we'll take a closer look at this one today. The Corsair A500 is Corsair's re-entry to the air cooling market. I wished they would have called it Corsair 500. Really bad joke, I know, but um, still quite, uh, quite cool and funny that Corsair decided to go back into the air cooling market after I don't know how, how many years just making AIOs, which were quite successful. They also have a very good performance. But this is the Corsair A500, the new air cooling unit from Corsair. They haven't been making an air cooling unit for about 10 years. The previous ones were the A70 and A50, which were also low and mid-range air cooling units. Everything of the A50 and A70 was completely aluminium, starting off from the fins itself, which is still the same on this one and still the same on most other air cooling units, but also the bottom cooling plate, which is typically an indicator for a quite cheap air cooling unit. That's why I was also very surprised when I came to the Corsair suite and spotted that this is a direct heat pipe touch cooler. Direct heat pipe touch cooler means that we have heat pipes that are exposed and they make direct contact with the heat spreader of your CPU. Which first speaking or thinking would make kind of sense because you don't have an additional heat barrier or layer in between your CPU and the heatsink which would prevent the heat dissipation. But then thinking of for example Ryzen 3900X, 3950X, those CPUs have hot spots on the very low point of the heat spreader. Therefore we have to first transfer the heat from those hot spots towards the center of the CPU and then spread the heat to the cooling plate of our air cooling unit. And for that, typically it's much better to use an additional copper plate on the bottom, for example, as we have on the Noctua NHD 15, there's an additional um, copper plate on the bottom that spreads the heat in addition to the heat sinks. Because if you just have a tiny hotspot in the center, for example, on those heat pipes right here, they are very bad in spreading the heat towards the outer heat pipes. And on this cooling unit, it's quite interesting that they decided to go for four heat pipes in total only. So two times six on their sides and two times eight millimeter heat pipes on the center. Most other air cooling units in that price range use at least six heat pipes and typically in a different kind of configuration. And they also don't use the direct heat pipe touch. Also, this plate on the bottom right here, which is kind of holding the heat pipes together and then also making contact for the mounting mechanism, this thing right here should be aluminium. At least that's what they told us during uh, CES when we visited them at the booth. I also wouldn't expect or think that they would say it's aluminium while it's copper. It wouldn't make any kind of sense because copper would obviously be better because it would help to spread the heat. Um, from let's say the center heat pipes to the outer heat pipes that's why making this part of copper would always be better. My main concern for using aluminium as base material for a high-end air cooling unit is also the fact that a lot of people in this price range like to use liquid metal and liquid metal is really corrosive towards aluminium I'm sure you all know that and that's why I'm not sure if we can actually use liquid metal on this first of all we will have to clarify and test if this is really aluminium I think it is and if we clarify this we will also have to test and see if the liquid metal will be corrosive towards um, this base plate right here looking at the base plate itself or the base structure of the cooler, we can notice that there are some tiny gaps between the heat pipes, which is something you surely cannot prevent with this type of construction. There's um, no way to get around this because typically you just press down those heat pipes and then you go over the surface once with one of those big mills and try to make it as flat as possible. But since heat pipes are pipes, you will always have some kind of gaps between them. Typically they are filled with thermal paste, so that's not really an issue, but just in case you're getting one of those cooling units, you will always feel 
some roughness on the bottom that could be improved for sure and the main or the easiest uh, way to improve this is typically just adding another layer of copper another base plate which can be perfectly flat milled or also give it some kind of convex concave structure what i'm concerned about when it comes to those gaps is the fact that it could be that in some location the nickel plating of the aluminium base part is not entirely there or perfect therefore some part of the liquid metal could make direct contact to the aluminium and then corrode the heatsink that's something we will test later in this review the two 120 millimeter fans are rated from 400 to 2400 rpm which is really a wide range and also explains why this thing can be quite loud and therefore also annoying but we will get to this later when we take a closer look at the results talking about the weight this thing is 1480 grams which is really quite a lot just for comparison the Noctua NHD 15 has 1320 grams so this is about 150 grams heavier than the Noctua NHD 15 the two fans come without RGB and considering that this thing is 100 euro this could be either a negative or a positive point depending if you like or hate RGB if you hate RGB this could be a very good air cooling unit because there is nothing on there which will shine in, into your eyes but if you decide that you want to ha have RGB and then you maybe decide that you're swapping those uh, Corsair fans with Corsair fans that have RGB you immediately end up in a price range of about 140 to 150 euro total which is really really expensive and in that case you should probably just go for an AIO. Compatibility is widely provided. We can mount this thing on AM3, AM4, FM1, FM2, all AMD sockets basically except for Threadripper which makes sense because this base plate or design is purely not designed for Threadripper would lead in bad performance that's why it makes absolute sense not to support AMD Threadripper. For Intel platform it also widely supports most Intel platforms talking about 2066, 2011, 115X. So most of the Intel and AMD platforms are supported as as I said except for a threadripper. We will quickly take a look at how this thing is mounted and then we will go to the testing results. To illustrate the mounting of the A500 cooler we will just use my test platform right here which is the Strix X570 TF gaming motherboard. This means we're using the AM4 socket and we have a Ryzen 9 3900X CPU on here, some Dominator Platinum memory sticks which have a little bit elevated height which will be important later when we're going to mount the fan. First step is to remove those mounting brackets which come stock from AMD but we will keep the AMD stock backplate means that we can just conveniently mount this thing on our table. Next step is using those plastic standoffs those are the ones for AM4 socket, for AM3 there are different ones included. Next step is using those metal plates, it's just important that they face towards the CPU, so the band goes in direction of the CPU. If you buy the A500 it comes with thermal paste pre-applied but in my test I'm going to use the same thermal paste for all coolers so we have the same conditions that's why I have to apply a thermal paste. To prepare the cooler for mounting we first have to remove the top plate so we can access the screws through this hole and we're also going to remove the fans. Those two screws are used to connect both cooler and motherboard. Now it's time to put the fans back on and what's just really amazing about this cooler is the sliding mechanism because you can perfectly align your fans to for example the mainboard I.O. shield right here or also the memory sticks on the back. You could argue that it doesn't look perfectly symmetrical now, which I kind of agree, but also you could just decide not going for RGB memory modules in this case because you wouldn't see it anyway, it would be hidden underneath the fan, therefore you would just go for lower profile memory sticks such as the Vengeance LPX, otherwise you could just also increase the height of the fan on the right 
to make it more symmetrically, obviously you will lose maybe like 0.5 degrees Celsius in performance because you lose a little, little bit of airflow right here and here. Time to follow up on a question if this part right here is made of aluminium or copper. I'm pretty sure it is aluminium. It wouldn't make any sense that Corsair would have said something wrong at CES. Still we're going to scratch it a little bit and then we can see through the color if it's aluminium or not. And also through the feeling of just scratching if you've been working with this metal quite a lot then you know how to differentiate copper and aluminium. We can clearly identify that it's aluminium, just judging by the small particles we scratched off from the surface. You can see that they're shining in silver, a clear indicator that it's aluminium. It also feels very hard, which is a good indicator that it's aluminium. Copper would be a lot more soft and I think this uh, surface here should be like nickel plating, like dark nickel plating on the aluminium. We tested in two different scenarios. First of all, maximum fan speed 100 percent. We were testing this with the included fans. We did not replace it with some kind of reference fans because as I said before, in my opinion, it really does not make sense to replace fans, for example, on this unit because then you end up with like 140, 150 euro. And in that case, you should just get any kind of AIO because it will be better from performance. And the second test is testing all air cooling units at about 40 dBA. I tried to adjust the fan speed as good as possible to get as close as possible to 40 dBA to simulate how the performance is if all have the same kind of noise level. First chart showing the 100% fan speed. The chart is led by Corsair H115i, 59 degrees Celsius, followed by Deep Cool Assassin and NHD15. Then we have the A500 with 60 degree, 63 degrees Celsius, followed by Dark Rock Pro 4 from Be Quiet with 66 degrees Celsius, and then Alpenfern Motherhorn, 68 degrees Celsius. If we adjust the noise level to 40 dBA, Corsair H115i is still leading the chart with 61 degrees Celsius. That's, that means we lost 2 degrees Celsius. And then the only thing that changed is that NHD15 took over the Deep Cool Assassin. NHD15 now with 62 degrees Celsius and Assassin with 63 degrees Celsius. The A500 actually lost the most in this test, comparing it to 100% fan speed. Lo lost 3 degrees Celsius going to 66 degrees Celsius. Darkbrook Pro 4, 69 and Alpenfin Matterhorn, 70 degrees Celsius. In the end, the performance is not bad, but it's also not great considering the price of this air cooling unit with 100 euro. Thinking about the NHD15 that is cheaper and also Deep Cool Assassin that is cheaper and they're slightly better than this air cooling unit. 100% fan speed is something I can clearly not recommend. It's extremely loud. Even having my headphones on, I can still hear it while gaming. That's why 100% fan speed is something that's absolutely not recommended. But still, this air cooling unit kind of lives from its fan speed because those fans are really, really strong. And if they're running at 100% fan speed, performance is certainly there. If we adjust it to 40 dBA, which in my opinion is fine, using headphones, I can game and I will not hear the air cooling unit. That's why 40 dBA is fine to me. And in this case, the A500 is still four to three degrees worse than NHD15 or Deep Cool Assassin, considering the price of 100 euro. It's it's a good performance, it will certainly work for all kinds of conditions, but there are air cooling units that are better and cheaper and more quiet. We will now apply some thermal grizzly conductor out liquid metal and let it cure for 24 hours and see if it did any kind of damage to the base plate. It's been 48 hours since I applied the liquid metal. It looks pretty good so far. Typically, if the liquid metal reacts with aluminum, there's some kind of black oxide, but so far, it looks very clean. Let's wipe off the liquid metal and see how it looks underneath. After removing the liquid metal, you can still see some kind of marks, residues from liquid metal, which is something you simply cannot prevent. It's really normal and also not a problem, but I cannot find any signs of corrosion or oxidation, which looks pretty good. Let's get to the conclusion of the Corsair A500 air cooler. In general, solid performance, but not the best performance we've seen so far. NHD15 and Deepcool Assassin 3 are both cheaper and perform better, and they're also more quiet. While the Corsair cooler, in my perspective, is much nicer when it comes to the design. We don't have this typical tower cooler design where we can see the heat pipes from the top. This cover 
is made quite nicely. The mounting is very easy. We have thermal paste pre-applied on the bottom and those mounting mechanisms for the fans are absolutely brilliant. They are so much better than those clamps and those clamps are certainly so much cheaper in production. I think they're only a few cents and obviously those kind of fan mountings cost a lot more. That's why I can kind of justify that this cooler is 100 euro. Still, it should perform better at this price point and it should also be more quiet. When it comes to the liquid metal application, I'm not 100% sure. So far, for only two days, I couldn't find any issues, any signs of corrosion, but it's very likely or it could happen that something of the gallium will eventually work its way through the nickel plating and then somehow corrode the aluminium. That's why I would say, if you get this cooler, just stick to your conventional thermal paste and you should be fine. So much about the A500. Thanks for joining in. See you next time.